Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to today's lesson, which we're gonna be talking about virtual machines on Apple Silicon. So the reason that we're gonna be talking about this is as you've noticed, I'm on the road here and not everyone's able to carry around two laptops with them, like another System76 Linux laptop as I have here. And sometimes it's just convenient to have multiple operating systems to do testing on one machine. So again, today we're gonna to be talking specifically about Apple's, I'm gonna be testing this on my M1, which is an ARM-based machine, and I'm gonna be using VMware Fusion, which works as far as I know. Now, there might be other solutions that you can try to follow along with. I know VirtualBox and so on are getting updates, but this is a method that I've tested. So with that said, I hope you go ahead and enjoy this lesson. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is download a version of the Ubuntu operating system. I could try with other Linuxes if you want, but what we're gonna do, since I'm on an ARM-based machine, download the 64-bit ARM architecture. Now, if you're like me, you might make mistakes, download the other desktop image for AMD-based machines or Intel-based machines, and I'll actually show you what happens later on if you make that mistake. That's not a big deal. But anyways, to make this process most efficient, go ahead and start downloading the .iso file, which is the image of the operating system for Ubuntu while we go ahead and proceed with the next steps. Then we'll go ahead and download VMware Fusion. Now, many of you might have used VirtualBox, but VMware Fusion is another great product that you can try. They've actually got a free version available here, which you're gonna see me navigate to. As long as you're using it for personal use, that's fine. I'm gonna assume that you're a student or maybe just testing this to see if it's working and wanna buy a license later. So you'll need to create an account and register, which just takes a few moments to do. So go ahead and complete that process, and then we'll go ahead and get ready to install VMware Fusion. Now, once you've completed the registration process, make sure that you're logged in and we'll go ahead and use your unique license key to get started. So you go ahead and see the license keys there. I've blurred mine out, but you should have your own. And then you can download VMware Fusion. Go ahead and copy and paste that license key if you haven't already, because we're gonna need that during the installation process. So just give it a few moments, it's pretty fast on my Mac here, and we'll go ahead and get things installed. For the most part, you can just accept all the defaults during the installation process, and that's no problem. So let's just take a moment to do that here now. And make sure to give permission to VMware Fusion. You'll need to type in your password, the same password that you type when you log into your machine. And then we'll go ahead and get started with VMware Fusion Player 13. Go ahead and agree to a license. Here's where I'll paste in your license key here or you might need to type it out one way or the other, but it should work. And once you've done that, the installation will be complete. So now let's go ahead and get started with Ubuntu here with VMware Fusion. And it might ask you some security questions, and that's okay, let's not worry about this stuff here. But let's go ahead and try to install a virtual machine. Now here's where I'm gonna show you something that's a little bit tricky and a mistake that I've often done when installing things, but I've actually got multiple versions of Ubuntu on my machine. Maybe I've accidentally downloaded them, but we want to pay attention to that amd64.iso file because that's a different architecture. And the way that these virtual machines like VMware Fusion, VirtualBox, and so on are set up is they can emulate certain types of architectures. So I'm going to try to attempt this, and I wanted to keep this mistake in here just because I thought it was interesting. So you go ahead and set up your machine, set up your username and password, and maybe where you want to store the machine. Not too much to customize there that we have to worry about. But let's go ahead and just save in the default location, and we'll proceed. Now, here we're getting ready to run VMware Fusion, so you can click on the giant play box or play button there. And you'll see that it can't be run here because we're trying to emulate the wrong type of architecture that we don't have support for currently. Now, there are ways to support x86 machines on Mac. You can use other types of emulators or hypervisors to do this, but we want to get something that's up and running. So let's go ahead and shut down this virtual machine here. You can see I'm just playing around with the options here, but let's just go ahead and create a new one. And what we're going to go ahead and do is find the correct ISO file here, this time the ARM architecture, because my machine's an ARM-based architecture. And let's go ahead and proceed forward. Now you'll observe that I have four gigabytes of memory there, two CPU cores. 
and I might want to customize those settings later to give more power if my virtual machine's too slow. So with that said though, let's just go ahead and see if this is working and proceed forward. I'll close out that other virtual machine and now we'll go through the Ubuntu setup. Just hit enter for the first option here. And this only takes a few moments to get started here, but the good news is it looks like it's working. If there's any error messages for some reason that's not working, make sure you copy those or send a screenshot to somebody so you can get some help. But this looks like it's working so far, so I'd say we're in pretty good shape. And there it is, it's booted up. We have Ubuntu running on our Mac M1, and this should work for M2s or other machines as well. I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal here. If you're not familiar with Ubuntu, you can follow along with how I did that. LS lists the commands here. And then I'm going to install some OpenGL application just to see if graphics works, because I do a lot of graphics stuff. I can see I don't have it here. So just to show you how to install some new packages on your newly minted Ubuntu machine, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. And I'll just take a moment here. And again, showing you how to open up the terminal again. And let's see, let's go to our settings, mess around a little bit here. We can change the things like the background, our display, and let's get the resolution a little bit more reasonable size here. Again, depending on how big your machine is, the monitor, you can change these settings around. But that's looking pretty good to me. There we go. Oh, maybe too big, maybe too small, but you can play around with those things. In your view in VMware Fusion, you can set things to single window, full screen, to scale with the window, and that's how you can also play around with the size. That's also something I've noticed beginners have a little bit of trouble with when they first get started with VMs. So anyways, now that I've messed around with that enough, let's go back to the terminal, and let's actually install some useful stuff here. So again, I'm just going to show you where I'm at here. You can use commands like ls or pwd to look at the current working directory. Those are some handy commands to know, and if you're not familiar with those types of commands, feel free to check out some of my other videos to help you get quick start on the terminal. All right, let's go ahead and install libsdl, which is a graphics-based library here. We don't have permission, so we'll have to type in sudo first. sudo apt hyphen git space install. And says we can't find that package here. Hmm, okay, did I type it in wrong? Well, no. So in order to find out various repositories where we can find these packages, we're going to have to install something else here. So what we're going to do is add a repository, which is known as the universe here. And that's going to give us a bunch of locations to look for Ubuntu things that we can install. So various software packages and so on. It should be pretty quick. Again, our machine by default is going to be connected to the same Wi-Fi as your Apple machine is. All right, now it looks like that worked. So let's go ahead and retry that experiment here. Install SDL, which is a handy library, capital Y to install. And that's how you install packages on Ubuntu. It's, there's many other ways to do it, but this is just one example showing how things work. And if you need any dependencies for your coursework or whatever, this is how you can do it. All right, that's great. Looks like it worked here. So let's go ahead and see if we can install some other stuff that might be useful. Let's go ahead and apt git install Mesa. Hmm. Well, what I'm basically trying to do here is install some graphics drivers here. Let's see how I do that. Mesa utils. And you can do different tr tricks and just Google how to install some of these things here, but it looks like it's been installed. Now I can run this graphics application here. I'm checking what version of OpenGL I have. And if I grep for the version string amongst all those characters, it looks like I have version 4.5, which is great. I can do lots of graphics stuff or game here. And there's an application running. So that's all there is to it. I'm pretty convinced that this is working and we can do some serious development now on our virtual machine, or at least test our tools. Thank you. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. We're able to get a Ubuntu machine up and running on your Mac or otherwise whatever operating system that you need. It's a really useful tool to be able to do this, especially when you're deploying software to be able to test different platforms out and so on. Now, again, there might be various limitations that you run into. You might need more RAM on your virtual machine. You might need to enable 
virtual uh, hardware acceleration and some of these things or install drivers like Mesa, for instance, as there's upgrades depending on your needs for what you're programming. But with that said, hopefully this gets you started. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a like or subscribe and feel free to comment below if you have any questions. With that said, folks, I'll see you in the next one.